everybody, welcome to part two of our little series looking at the Atomos Ninja Star and comparing it to the Black Magic Hyperdeck. So looking at the, the Atomos Ninja Star, the first thing you're going to realize is its size. It's very, very small in, in a roughly the size of a pack of playing cards and also very light. One of the ways that they're able to get the size so small and lightweight is that it has no screen, which is what I think makes it a very similar comparison to the Black Magic, but we'll get into that kind of a little bit later on. Uh, it's a very compact design. There's some buttons across the front, some LEDs that give you all the indications. You control it through the buttons and also through certain combinations of presses of the buttons. So you can change the recording format, you can change the frame rate, you can adjust different things like that you know, by, uh, by various combinations of button presses. For power, this is powered by a uh, very common, those Sony uh, batteries. A lot of lights are powered by these. You can buy them everywhere and they're super cheap. And depending on what size of battery you put on the back, you can get a really long length of time out of these five hours, you know, and up from there. So power wise, uh, it's great for on the go. It's great for run and gun. It's great for stuff outside of the studio because you can buy these batteries really cheap. One battery is going to last you a long time. So with two batteries, maybe three batteries, you could shoot, you know, day to night, you know, on a, on a long day shoot going all over and not being anywhere near, you know, any plugs or anything like that. So power wise, definitely a win there. Recording media. So this records onto C fast cards. Some people are mistaking these for compact flash cards, which were popular a few years back. These are not those. These are C fast. They look similar, but it's a whole new area, a whole new technology, a whole new type of card that is just starting to come out. And actually, um, Black Magic is going to be having a camera come out with the Black Magic Ursa, which is coming out soon. That's going to take C fast cards. One of the benefits of the Atomos Ninja Star is that it takes CFast 1.0 cards. So the big benefit there is price. The 1.0 cards are significantly um, less expensive than the CFast 2.0 cards. So in comparison to Blackmagic, when it comes out, their camera is going to take the 2.0 cards because that's shooting raw and it's shooting you know, much, much more information. So that's going to take the 2.0. But for the Atomos Ninja Star, they're able to get away with just a 1.0 card. And actually, Atomos themselves are selling now the CFast cards. You can buy them through them, or you can get them through all your regular outlets, Amazon or, or whoever. I don't know if they're quite out in like Best Buy, if they're that wide yet. I'm thinking that they're not. So probably online purchasing is going to be your best bet. In terms of recording time, it really just depends on the size of your card, of course, and then the amount, uh, the, the, the codec the form of ProRes that you're going to be recording in. But I would say roughly as an estimate, if you've got a 64 gigabyte CFast card and you've got it at the highest ProRes setting, I, I want to say they say about 30 to 40 minutes of recording time, which isn't bad. But if you're shooting events or if you're shooting anything with any length of time, just know that you're going to need some extra cards. And also another thing to keep in mind is that with CFast, you know, your laptop doesn't just have a CFast slot like it probably has an SD slot. So you're going to have to have adapters and things with you if you're out in the field shooting. Just keep that in mind. Um, another benefit is mounting it. Because it is so light, it's got some threaded holes on it, standard sizes that you can mount it to your rig, things like that. One of the things they even talk about because it is so lightweight is that this is something that you could potentially mount to your DJI Phantom or similar type of quadcopter and then have your GoPro recording straight out to this. So now your DJI Phantom is up in the air recording ProRes, which is insanely better than just whatever your little action camera is gonna be recording natively. So that's a huge benefit there. The size, it really keeps coming back to the size. Um, in terms of not having a screen, that's gonna be depending on your use of it. If your camera has a screen that you're happy with, or if you've already purchased an external field recorder and you're happy with that, great, then you don't worry about not having the screen and it makes up for it by having longer battery life and a smaller size. If, you're, if you don't have an external screen and you were going to look at getting an external screen, then yeah, maybe you would look at going up a size into the Atomos you know, uh, Samurai or anything like that that has a screen and you know, now it starts getting a little bit more 
feature rich and everything as it were. The other great thing about the Atomos is the price. It's $295 if you purchase it through Atomos. And that's a great deal for having an external recorder that can record in ProRes, that's huge. That's a really, really big plus. And uh, that's something that I think is really gonna help move these and make it a lot more compelling. And I think it's gonna open the door for people that were thinking about trying out an external recorder, but they weren't sure if it was for them, what's the benefit, I don't wanna drop a grand and just experiment with something. So this gets you in safer and cheaper and easier and you can just go. Another feature of the Atomos is that it records in with a micro HDMI input. So you'd have to have whatever your camera output is into micro HDMI in. And then it also has a micro HDMI out so that you can loop it. So you can go from your camera into the Atomos and then from the Atomos out to an external monitor if you're using a monitor. So it gives you that option. You don't have to lose the monitor in place of the Atomos. Depending on the camera that you're using, what is another nice feature of this is that it can also be triggered by your camera's HDMI. So Atomos says most major cameras, Canon, Sony, Panasonic, others, it will trigger the device to record. That means when you press the record button on your camera, the Atomos will automatically start recording. If it's not one of the supported cameras, all that means is that when you start recording on the camera, you gotta start also recording pressing it manually on the device. Not a huge deal, just something to remember that if you're shooting a lot of stuff and doing a lot of starts and stops, you may forget to push that button on a take or two and that could bum you out later. So hopefully you have one of the cameras that it likes and that it will be controlled over the HDMI because that's gonna be a huge benefit to you. In terms of the recording formats that it records in, in terms of the frame rates and everything like that, I'm gonna put up a list right here. These are all the formats that it records in. Uh, those are all the major standard ones. You'll notice there are no real high speed ones if you're shooting like slow-mo and things like that. That is not there, so keep that in mind. Again, depending on what you're shooting, depending on what kind of uh, projects you're working on. But for most projects, this has all the codecs and, and footage styles that you're looking for right there. Uh, one big question when you're using an external recorder is depending on your frame rate, how does the recorder record? So a lot of times when cameras, then this varies by model, so check your own manual and your own information, but a lot of cameras, when they were recording 24p, which is very popular to give that movie look, it's not actual 24p, it's a 24p inside of a 60 interlaced uh, field. I'm not gonna go into all the details of what is a 60 interlaced and how do they do the, you know, the three, two, two, two pull downs and everything like that. I'm sure there's YouTube videos of people much smarter than myself explaining that in greater detail than I can. But just know that if the recorder is not happy with the input coming from the camera, the things are gonna look weird. You're gonna get a lot of, uh, you're gonna get the interlaced lines in there and it'll just be off. So the Atomos can actually do pull down in the device itself. So if your camera records 24P in a 60i field and requires pull down, the Atomos will do that in there. Other devices that don't do the pull down inside the device, you would have to then in post-production go through a separate process and have the pull down removal done and extract the 24P and it's a whole process. So luckily you don't have to worry about that and uh, this is a good feature to have in a device that records through HDMI because typically it's HDMI that has these problems. SDI does not have those problems and we'll get more into that with the Blackmagic review coming up next. So there you have it. There's a lot of the features, the specs, and you know some pros and cons to uh, the Atomos Ninja Star. Overall, to me, lots of pros. The cons, not too much, really. The CFast Media, I wish it was a little bit more abundantly and easily found. I wish that, um, yeah, that's about it. That's pretty much all that I wish for out of this. It's a great device. Oh, I know. I wish it was a micro HDMI. Micro HDMI is not the best connection. It's easy for those to come loose. It's a little weak, but I understand that with the size and everything like that, maybe that's all that they could do. I get it, and it wouldn't be a deal breaker for me. It's just not the best connection in the world. So keep an eye on that. 
depending on what your use is. If you're in a real run and gun out in the field kind of setting, chances are those cables might get pulled out. So that would be a huge bummer. So don't let that happen. Oh, another downside is that you cannot review the footage that's on there unless you have an external recorder. So if your camera is recording and then sending it out to that, you can only watch what your own camera is recording to its own internal memory. So what that means is if you have your camera, you have the Atomos, you have to put the memory card in your own camera, and then you put the CFast card in the Atomos Ninja Star. The Atomos Ninja Star is recording and your camera is also recording. So when you play back on your camera, you're not playing back the Atomos, you're playing back the footage off of your own memory card. This will only play back through that HDMI output if you have an external monitor. Keep that in mind, again, depending on your rig and depending on your setup, this might affect you, might not. And if you're out in the field and you just need to make sure you got the shot and this and that, it's fine looking at the footage of your own, off of your own camera, you'll be fine. It's just really in post that the Atomos footage is gonna help. So that does it for the overview of the Atomos Ninja Star. Um, definitely a lot of pros and cons. For me, a lot more pros. I like the portability. I like the removable battery that lasts forever. Um, I am not a huge fan of CFast only because it's not really that prevalent yet, but like everything else, the price will only come down as it gets more widely adopted. Hopefully it gets adopted. Um, definitely a lot of pros for this. I think this is designed for people that want to get into using an external recorder but don't want to spend a ton of money. This is, has your name written all over it. So next, we're gonna be looking at the Blackmagic HyperDeck, which has been out a little while now. It's sort of the older kit on the block compared to the Ninja Stars. So we're gonna compare the two and see what's the benefit of the Blackmagic and who is each one of them for, because they are definitely not for the same person. So go ahead and click and go to the next video. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe, check out the other reviews, and to leave a comment below. What do you think of the Ninja Star? Are you gonna get one? Why or why not? Or if you have one, what do you think of it so far? So maybe post some links to your work so we can share and, and see what the real results of this product are. Thanks all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.